Hello everyone, I'm Ezekiel Bruni and I am crazy excited today because today I get to show you all our favorite VPNs on my favorite operating system. That's right, Linux. I use Windows for a lot of stuff, including work and gaming, but my heart belongs in the open source community. So I get to show you what, again, like I said, my our favorite VPNs, the best VPNs for Linux in this video. All right, <laughs> I'm actually super excited for this. I created a whole uh, virtual machine based on the brand new Fedora 36. As you can see, I am in Mexico. I'm actually in Mexico City. And, uh, you know, uh, we're looking at Netflix Mexico right here. Now, which VPN are we starting with? We're starting with ExpressVPN. You can see here, I hit, uh, I typed in ExpressVPN list and I got, I've got a list of um, sort of the more, the more common servers and like the, the local, uh, the servers I can connect to the fastest. As you can see there, you've got options though, VPN list all, and you get all of the 94 different countries that uh, ExpressVPN has servers in. So, you know, you've always got a server close by when all you care about is fast speeds. But obviously I care about more than that. Uh, now you can uh, run ExpressVPN on Ubuntu, Debian, Fedora, Raspberry Pi OS, formerly Raspbian, uh, but only the 32-bit version. It won't work with the 64-bit version that works on the newer Raspberry Pis like the 4B and so on. Uh, it also works on Linux Mint, Arch, and that basically covers everything. <laughs> All of the Arch and uh, Debian and Fedora derivatives should also work just fine. I haven't seen any mention of Red Hat or Enterprise Linux derivatives, but I have gotten this to work on Rocky Linux before. So, you know, that's cool. So let's connect real quick and show you what it's like. Now, I can connect via the command line, but the browser extension does work. The browser extension doesn't just cover, you know, like it doesn't just connect to the VPN for the browser. It actually connects to the CLI client and uh, will turn on the VPN for your whole machine unless you set up some sort of split tunneling. I'm in Mexico City. I like to use the US Dallas server. I'm just, so I'm just going to do that. And boom, I am in Dallas. Let's show you a speed test. Mind you, this is inside of a virtual machine. That ping took a little longer than I would have liked, but uh, the virtual machine might be affecting the speeds a little bit. Nonetheless, I'm hitting, ooh, that's nice, 110 megabits per second. My max is 115, mind you. And that is a fantastic bit of speed there. Mind you, ExpressVPN is built for speed. Uh, they have their own open source protocol, an encryption protocol called Lightway. Um, you can, of course, choose uh, WireGuard or OpenVPN if you want. Uh, nearly hitting my 10 megabits per second max upload speed. I really need more uh, upload speed. But as you can see, that is working just fine and pretty quickly. Now let's you know, give it the old streaming test. Now, like I said, ExpressVPN is actually pretty great for streaming overall. Okay, I'm logged in. I'll only be showing you a couple seconds of each show or movie because, well, copyright stuff. But I am connected to Dallas and it is working. Heck yeah. Now let's, uh, let's try out Disney Plus here. The Quest. Immersive video stuff. That worked and it worked fast. Honestly, it worked faster than it usually does on Windows. <laughs> and inside of a Linux VM, no less, with no GPU acceleration whatsoever. Okay, well, that is the tests for ExpressVPN. Let's talk about it a bit more. ExpressVPN uses open source protocols, even their own lightweight uh, protocol is open source, even if their client software is not. At least I haven't seen any license to the contrary on the Linux client and for the Windows client I know for sure is not open source. ExpressVPN also has its own DNS service, the media streamer service, which is useful for other devices like your smart TVs, game consoles, at least the ones that don't support VPNs, uh, VPN apps on their own. And it is available, of course, on Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android, as well as Linux, and on some smart TVs, on some routers even. 
So uh, ExpressVPN is everywhere. And it does have split tunneling, which I love. I'm very glad about that. Uh, it has a 30 day money back guarantee and very solid prices for the pretty massive amount of features you get, the massive network and the fast speeds. Overall, ExpressVPN is just pretty great that way. And next we have CyberGhost. CyberGhost, like ExpressVPN before it, only has a CLI client. It does have a browser extension, but the browser extension is a separate product, does not connect to the CLI client, and is free, but very limited, of course, compared to the actual app. The CLI options are really simple, though. You know, you can put in your country code, your city like this, and of course you can use the CLI client to see a list of all the countries and cities available. I am connected to the Dallas server, as you can see. I was just on the Los Angeles server, had a little trouble with it, but here we go. That is a nice uh, short ping time, great speeds, and let's check out that upload speed. What's it look like? Ooh, nearly my max. Yep, Dallas is the, usually the right location for me. Okay, that's that's working great. So as you can see, that's all fine. I might need to reconnect to da uh, Los Angeles though for the streaming test because um, while well, Netflix worked last time I tried this, Disney Plus had some issues. Let's see how this goes. So right now, Netflix. Let's hit up, ooh, I do like Taylor Tomlinson. And the video's loading flawlessly and I can't show you more than that because of copyright stuff. Let's uh, try Ice Age here. Ice Age Scrat Tales. Oh, there we go, working just fine. Like I've mentioned, uh, Disney Plus is actually one of the hardest services to unlock, but that is working just fine. Now, there are some things you need to know about uh, CyberGhost here. It is only technically supported on Ubuntu 19.04, uh, 18.04, and 16.04, Fedora uh, 31, 30, and 29, Mint 20, Kali Linux, uh, CentOS 7, Pop and Pop OS. Um, it, a lot of those versions might sound old to you, and well, they are. But don't worry, it does work, as you see, on Fedora 36 with just a little finagling. What I did literally was I went, uh, downloaded the installer for Fedora. I opened this install script. You see this, these if else statements in the bash script uh, that basically just say if version 29 and if it's this version of glibc, uh, then, you know, allow CyberGhost to install. Well, I did something so dumb. I just added version 36 and glibc version 2.35 which is my current version of glibc, and it installed just fine. And as you can see, it is working absolutely flawlessly. So as you can see, it does work, although if you use it on a newer version of Linux, it will not be supported. It is listed for those older versions of Linux because CyberGhost has a really strong emphasis on business customers. They have business plans, all that good stuff. And simply put, a lot of enterprises don't update their operating systems all that often, but again, I don't know about newer versions of Ubuntu and so on, but it definitely does work on newer versions of Fedora. It also has a couple of other great features. It has dedicated streaming servers for different serv uh, streaming services, and you're set in different countries, set up in different countries. It has dedicated gaming servers set up in different countries, dedicated torrenting servers set up in different countries, and also has a, a network of what they call no spy servers. No spy servers are a set of servers specifically in Romania, which isn't part of any ma of those massive um, surveillance agreements. So if you uh, connect to those servers, you don't have to worry about being tracked. CyberGhost also has a money back guarantee that is 45 days long, 15 days longer than standard, and is one of the cheaper options altogether. Honestly, it's a pretty solid option. Um, if you want it on newer versions of Linux, you must remember that it won't be su officially supported. But it is still a good option and clearly, you know, doesn't need those older versions of Linux to work, in all likelihood. You may have to do a little finagling to make it work, but it's probably worth it if you want any of the CyberGhost specific features. Oh, and you can pay extra for a dedicated IP address, which, you know, is always good. Alright, let's move on to the next one. Oh, what's this? An actual graphic user interface. Yes, everyone, this is private internet access. It has a network in 84 countries, and you can choose from servers in all of them, and it shows you your ping and everything. I have already gone and connected to Houston because they do not have a Dallas server. I'm just going to reload all of these 
Well, I'm gonna go back for all of these. And it should be working just fine. Yep, uh, yeah, it registers me as being in Texas. It's connected me to the nearest uh, you know, test server, which is apparently in Dayton. Private internet access is a very interesting option in that unlike CyberGhost and ExpressVPN, it is completely open source. Even the client is completely open source. It has a graphical user interface, of course, as you can see, but it also has a CLI interface that you can use if you want to do things that way. And as and check it out, uh, the speeds are again fantastic. That is the fastest download speed I have seen tonight, and pretty decent upload speeds. The uh, you know while the network is a little smaller in terms of you know the number of countries it's available in, it is still a pretty darn big network. And as you can see, the Houston server at least is nice and fast. So we're going to try another store here, or store ah, another show here. And that is working just fine. Let's try another episode of Scrat Tales. Flawless. Working perfectly and honestly with less trouble than I have in Windows and so on. Private internet access is supported on uh, Ubuntu. It requires Ubuntu 18.04 plus. In other words, you know, it's compatible with all the latest versions just fine. It also works with Mint, Debian, Fedora, and Arch, as you can see as I'm working on Fedora here. It is, again, completely open source code, which, you know, for us Linux users is kind of a big deal. It's sort of, you know, one of the big reasons a lot of us use the operating system. Like CyberGhost and ExpressVPN, it has the kill switch. Uh, like ExpressVPN, it has its own DNS service to make streaming easier on some platforms. It's available, like CyberGhost and ExpressVPN, it's available on Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, Android, all of that good stuff, some routers, and has a 30-day money-back guarantee. It is also, to be perfectly honest, the cheapest option on this list. One quick note before I forget, Private Internet Access actually does have a extension as well, but it works with uh, just the browser. It doesn't need the desktop client to work. It will protect the traffic on any major browser, but it will not, of course, protect the traffic on the rest of your operating system. Uh, so that I thought I should mention. Private internet access also lets you choose your level of encryption. So you can go no encryption, you can go 128-bit AES, 256-bit AES, depending on what you want to trade off, like uh, encryption, qual uh, you know, heavy encryption or you know, faster speeds, all of that good stuff. If you just want to, you know, put your IP in another country and you're not worried about your internet traffic being spied on, you can just turn off that encryption completely. Psst, go figure. But you can choose between OpenVPN and WireGuard. You can also get dedicated up a dedicated IP address, which does cost extra. I actually really love private internet access. I've been using it a lot myself. I used to do ExpressVPN all the time, but um, it doesn't have a dedicated IP option. So I switched to private internet access and I've been personally loving it. Let's talk about them. What's the final score here? Well, CyberGhost, I would definitely say is good, but I would definitely also say use it on uh, actually supported Linux distributions. ExpressVPN, of course, has the biggest network, the best speeds, uh, great for streaming, all of that good stuff. Normally, we recommend ExpressVPN for everybody and everything because it just has a whole ton of features, is available on a whole ton of platforms, and has one of the strongest networks. However, I would be lying if I didn't say that this particular comparison is really close. Private internet access has a lot of good power user options. It is, again, open source, which makes it very attractive to Linux users. And ironically, uh, while I do consider private internet access to be more of a power user option, with ExpressVPN and CyberGhost only having command line clients for Linux, on Linux, private internet access becomes the user-friendly option because it has a GUI. So if you're like many Linux experts have a, a sort of refurbished an old laptop and put Linux on it to give something cheap and safe to your f friends or family, then private internet access would actually be the better VPN for them. So in general, I'm going to say ExpressVPN is our favorite for a reason, but if you're a pure Linux user, Man, I, I really might go for um, private internet access. Business users would still want to consider CyberGhost. So that is my <laughs> overly long outro. 
done. Um, check the links down in the description for full reviews of all of these uh, VPNs and all the services we tested, all of the speed tests we've run. Check down in the links for the coupon pages because, uh, yeah, we've got a coupon page. It covers all of these VPNs and many, most of the major VPNs out there. So, you know, if you want to pay for a year or three years in advance, you can get a good chunk of money off with a coupon. If you found this video useful and helpful, or maybe even just entertaining, please do consider liking, subscribing, hitting the bell notification icon. Well, I hope you liked this video. I hope you had fun watching it. I had fun making it. Finally got to do some proper Linux stuff. <laughs> this is Ezekiel Bruni, signing out.